Welcome back to Monitors Unboxed. A couple of weeks ago, I ran a video showing the differences between 96 zone full array local dimming and edge lit dimming for HDR content. Well, with the recent releases of the Samsung Odyssey Neo G7 and Neo G8 that we've been reviewing over on Hardware Unboxed, I thought this would be a good opportunity to add to this content and show the difference that 1000 plus zones can make to the appearance of HDR. Upgrading from 96 zones to over 1000 zones is an order of magnitude improvement that can bring significantly tighter dimming to HDR scenes with less blooming and deeper blacks. It's also a more costly option. The Neo G7 will typically set you back at least $200, but often $400 more than the Sony InZone M9. Hopefully this side-by-side -side video with every scene captured using the same camera settings will highlight the differences for you if you're thinking of buying a current gen HDR gaming monitor. For this comparison, representing the 1196 zone monitor is the Samsung Odyssey Neo G7, which has its zones arranged in a 46 by 26 grid, which looks something like this. The Sony InZone M9 is our 96 zone FALD monitor, which uses a 12 by 8 grid layout, which looks something like this. Clearly much larger zones here. Then for edge lit dimming, we have the Eve Spectrum 4K, a typical edge lit panel with 16 vertical zones. There are a few other differences with these displays owing to the fact the Neo G7 has a VA panel, whereas the InZone and Spectrum both use IPS technology. VA has a higher native contrast ratio that produces deeper blacks, which does assist with blooming in HDR content even with mini LED backlights. Samsung's local dimming algorithm is also different to Sony's, which is different to Eve's, so each monitor does decide how to dim differently, and that will mean these results aren't necessarily representative of different monitors with the same number of zones. But I'm sure at some point in the future we'll update this with an say, IPS versus VA battle with over a thousand zones when the appropriate monitors arrive. Anyway, let's get into the comparison, so I'll pass you over to VoiceOver Tim to analyze some comparison shots. VoiceOver Tim here, it's good to be here to take a look at some HDR monitors. And what we're looking at right here are just some test patterns to start with. We've got a 10% window that's being displayed on each of these monitors. And immediately one of the most distinctive differences between all three options is that on the 1196 zones, you can't really make out the bezel too easily in this area because the full array local dimming zones are fully switched off for the black areas. So the bezel is it's roughly around there somewhere, but as we look around this entire area, you just can't see it. Whereas on the 96 zones, you can see the bezel is coming up here, and on the edge lit, it is obviously very obvious. And that's because with this edge lit panel, as we were talking about in the previous video, the edges are illuminating all the way up to this central section here to display this white image. And with the 96 zones, we do get a bit of tighter illumination around the central 10% window area with a bit of dimming around the edges, but the InZone M9 is not really capable of turning the some of the zones fully off. You'll see that even in this area that some of the zones are still enabled. Whereas with the full array local dimming with 1000 plus zones on the Neo G7, you can see here that those zones are fully disabled and are showing full black, which gives us the tightest dimming around this 10% window size that you can see here, and clearly the most superior black levels being shown there on the left. The dimming is even more obvious, in my opinion, in this second image. Here we're showing a whole bunch of different luminance values for each of these different squares here. So up the top here, we've got our mostly low luminance values, one nit, five nits, that sort of thing, all the way down to what should be over a thousand nits for these bottom images. And once again, you'll see that in all these intermediary spaces here, where the image really should be black, like here and here, and also in these sections over here on the edge lit panel, you notice quite distinctively that when we have a thousand plus zones that these areas can be dimmed quite effectively. You'll see they're basically full black and we're only seeing the illuminated area that should be illuminated. The rest of the image is black and that extends all the way up to these sections where we start to see the deeper and darker gray values such as here and here. Whereas with 96 zones, these areas down the bottom here are quite illuminated and that's because to show these very bright illuminated areas, those quite large 96 zones are going to have to be switched on. Whereas at the top of the monitor, you'll see here that we're getting greater dimming capabilities for all these black sections in the middle, and that's because the monitor is able to dim to show these dimmer and darker squares at the top of the image.
In contrast here on the edge lit panel, you'll see that the entire screen is illuminated. The black levels are very consistent as we move from the top to bottom of the screen. So whether the monitor is showing these super bright near a thousand nits at the bottom or the one to two nits at the top, the backlight is fully illuminated throughout that entire image. And I think what you'll see here is that the edge lit image does look noticeably worse than when we start to get down to a thousand plus zones. However, you can see some artifacting from the thousand zone image. Samsung tends to try and dim these edges as much as they possibly can. So you'll see it's very faint, it's quite hard to see, but there is a very slight halo effect that makes this central section a little bit brighter than what you see on the outer edges. It's a bit more noticeable in practice than what we've managed to show here on the, the camera image, and you'll see a bit of pulsing as well due to the way the FALD backlight operates, but you'll see a tiny bit of vignetting for some of these darker shades, which is just an artifact of the way the FALD system on this particular monitor works. Next up, we've got quite a bright checkerboard test, and you'll see here that the 96 zone FALD system used on the InZone M9 and the edge lit system over here are quite ineffective at dimming the dark black areas that we should be seeing in between the bright areas on this checkerboard. Even when we have 96 zones, the zones themselves are quite large and they tend to extend into these areas that need to be black, which means that at least with Sony's dimming algorithm, they chose to illuminate this section and have a bit of blooming here, which extends from all of these different checkerboard elements here into these black sections. And that's where you'll see these generally raised blacks that we're seeing both on the InZone M9, but also over here on the edge lit panel, which again, there's not too much of a difference between these two sides. Meanwhile, over here with the full array local dimming image, we have quite substantial dimming into these black areas here. And this is a benefit that we get not just from the amount of dimming zones, over a thousand of course, but also from the VA technology, which for this Neo G7 sample tends to have over 4,000 to one native contrast ratio. So there is a very faint amount of blooming. You're probably not gonna be able to see it too well on the YouTube video. There is a small amount of blooming. Um, there is a small amount of illumination. You can just slightly make out um, if you're looking very, very closely, of course, the bezels and edge of this particular monitor, slight amount of blooming there, but certainly a much higher contrast image that we're seeing over here from the Neo G7, as opposed to either of the other two options that are on screen at the moment. Next up, we've got the dual corner box test. We're only showing one box on the screen here for each of the monitors, as you'll see here. But generally speaking, what this test provides us is a look at how far the blooming extends when we have an single illuminated image on screen. With the 1000 plus zones of the Neo G7, we only get a very small amount of bloom. It tends to extend about this far-ish from this um, illuminated object that we've got in the corner here. With the 96 zones, you'll see that it extends quite a bit further. We're getting about this much distance in terms of the bloom extending from the bright illuminated object, which makes sense as we do have 10 times the amount of dimming zones over here with the Neo G7. Then for the edge lit dimming, well, of course, the blooming extends vertically all the way to the edges of the monitor because of the way the vertical zones are set up. And then they also extend out about this far as well. So we get quite significant blooming and haloing on this edge lit image here, which is why we tend to prefer the way that the full array images here appear. Even the 96 zones I feel looks quite a bit better in this test than what we see on the right hand side. Next up, we're just taking a look at some real world HDR videos. You can find these videos on YouTube if you wanna take a look at how they appear on your monitor as well. And as we browse through this particular video sample, there's quite a lot of bright elements which look very similar across all three of these monitors because, well, for bright scenes, the dimming functionality doesn't make too much of a difference between each of these monitors. But as we get into some of the darker scenes as we progress through the rest of this video, you will see some noticeable differences. So as we pause here, you'll see quite a substantial difference between the 1000 local dimming zones on the left here, which is able to dim this entire black section in the middle here, compared to the 96 zones, which appears to be dimming sort of around this area mostly, but does have some clear blooming in these sections here as the zones are trying to illuminate this bottom section over here. And then for the edge lit image, well obviously we have this entire zone illuminated from top to bottom here. So there's no real dimming here and you can see some raised blacks for example in this section here, which you don't get as much of on the 96 zones and then you get very little of when we go all the way across to the 1000 plus zones.
I just wanted to briefly pause on this image here to look at the overexposure that we're seeing purely from the camera settings that we're using. I did see a comment on the previous video talking about how someone preferred the edge lit image because you can see in these sections here that the 96 zones does look a bit more exposed, maybe overexposed, less bright detail being shown here. That's more due to the camera settings than the actual monitor's performance. This is simply down to the 96 zones actually being the brightest monitor out of the three that we're seeing here. So the fact we can actually see more detail on the left and the right hand sides, that's down to the monitor being less bright. It's not gonna look like that when you're actually viewing this image. Simply the high dynamic range is too much for the particular camera settings we're using here. This is another really good example to pause on because it clearly shows the difference that we're seeing between the three local dimming techniques. For these brightly illuminated objects, the balls on the 1000 plus zone dimming count image, you'll see there's very little blooming around any of the balls here. You can see a tiny bit of it in these sections here to a very small extent, but really the blooming is negligible when you have a thousand zones showing a scene like this where the background is pure black. With the 96 zones, there's, well, quite a bit of a problem because the zones are much larger than each of these balls, which means to show these at the appropriate illumination level, we kind of have to accept the fact that there's gonna be some raised black levels for these sections in between the balls throughout most of this image. And this is of course also what you'll be seeing over here with the edge lit dimmed image as the entire zones from top to bottom are illuminated and we get these big open expanses of raised blacks over here. There is a small amount of dimming occurring in the top here of the 96 zone image, but it's fairly negligible. Generally speaking, you'll see raised blacks for this particular scene, whereas of course over here with this VA panel and 1196 zones, we see the perfect black levels that we should be seeing from this sort of image in motion. So even as we continue through some of these scenes that are relatively bright, I still think you can see how we are getting the best contrast on the image that has the sufficient local dimming zone count on the left. The middle image and the right image, which have either the low zone count FALD or the edge lit, tend to have raised blacks even in some of the brighter areas where we would expect deeper and darker contrast, whereas of course, the as you would expect from a thousand plus zones, generally you get the best black levels and experience there. And it's not just, again, because of the, the dimming zone count. It's also because of Samsung's algorithm that tends to prefer deeper and darker blacks over necessarily the brighter highlights that you may see from the InZone M9's image. The InZone M9 tends to get very bright and tends to prefer brightness for its HDR presentation as opposed to contrast, which I feel is how Samsung tries to prefer it in their particular monitor implementation. This is another example that I wanted to show. It's one of the best examples I think on YouTube for showing how black levels differ between each of the different HDR monitor technologies. And as we get into this very next scene, which is coming up in just a moment, we're going to get a really good example of the differences between the dimming technologies. So this is quite a complicated scene for any dimming technology to deal with, but you can see that the highest zone count dimming system that we get over here has, of course, the least amount of blooming. So as we can see around this cup here in this section, this entire area should be basically full black, and we're getting that mostly with the Neo G7's image. There is a small amount of blooming that you might be able to see in this section, which I believe would look slightly better on an OLED, and these sections sort of in here, these very fine details that you'll see in some of the, the cloth element, the very fine details around here, that's quite tricky for a dimming algorithm to deal with, as well as some of the intermediate little points in the smoke, but no, I shouldn't say smoke is probably steam. We're looking at tea here, aren't we? But generally speaking, for the rest of the image, you will get that deep dark blacks, and that gives us the most impressive HDR implementation. With the 96 zones in the middle here, there is a bit of blooming around this element. So I think the blooming extends to roughly around here on the right hand side of the image. So the zones tend to be able to dim up to around this level here. So we get a bit of extended blooming around these elements. Same without this side. And you'll see as well a bit of raised blacks in some of these fine cloth details, which are deeper and darker on the VA monitor that we're seeing on the left here. However, the dimming algorithm with 96 zones still allows us to dim some of the sections. For example, in this corner up here and this corner up here, which then when we move over to the edge lit image, you'll see a very different. Quite a lot of raised blacks on the edge lit image in this top left corner, 
Bit of dimming here for the 96 zones, significant dimming for the 1000 zones. Similar on the other side and also other areas to the image. So while for example these areas, the cloth areas, look quite similar between the 96 zones and the edge lit dimming zones, they look quite a bit better when we're looking over at the 1000 plus zones and also VA technology. Again, as we move through some of these examples, I feel we're getting a really good look at how the three dimming zone technologies differ. The image on the left with the Neo G7 tends to have very similar bright levels. Again, in a scene like this, it's not quite as bright as you'll see from the InZone M9, but the superior black levels, the superior shadow detail are all benefits that I think is worth a trade-off where you might get not quite as bright highlights as you'll see from some of the other monitor technologies. But Again, you know, a thousand zones tends to have its benefits in these sorts of scenarios where there's a lot of black being showed on the screen. And compared to the other two technologies, it really depends on where the bright elements are on screen. For example, I think with these glasses, you'll see that the edge lit dimming clearly looks worse than the two FALD systems in the middle and on the left. But then when we move to these bottles in the next scene, you'll see that the middle image looks significantly worse than the thousand zone count dimming on the left. So again, it really just depends the arrangement of the images and the elements on screen, how large the dark areas need to be, how much shadow detail there is as to whether you'll get the benefit of a thousand zones versus 96 zones versus the edge lit panel. In this next scene, when we're looking at Christmas lights, we get the benefit of not just the thousand zones on the left, but also VA technology, which gives us much deeper and darker blacks. For example, when we pause on this scene, not only do we get substantial dimming from thousand zones in the upper and bottom sections of this particular image, but the VA technology also allows these very fine details to be dimmed to a more significant degree than what you'll see on either of the other two images. Now there is a very small and faint amount of blooming that you will see, for example, around this area. And you'll also notice that the actual brightness of this image isn't quite as bright for some of these fine little LED elements as you'll see over here for the other two images. That's just again the way that Samsung has chosen their dimming algorithm. But I feel that the image on the left looks quite a bit better than what you'll see from the middle and right side image. Images. The 96 zones is able to dim this upper section here, which gives us deeper blacks for the night sky there. But clearly to show some of these bright elements here, the zones do extend out about this far in conjunction with IPS technology, which gives us this halo effect that sort of extends to about here, and of course all the way to the bottom edge of the monitor as well, which I feel doesn't give us as strong a dimming functionality as what you'll see from the 1000 plus zones. Then of course the worst image is over here with the edge lit, we get all of the issues with the 96 zones for the center section around here. You'll see that looks very similar over here as well. But we also get the non-effective dimming extending all the way up to this upper edge of the monitor. And like I said, that's because the, to illuminate this section, we need this entire vertical column to be illuminated. And that gives us really poor black levels right at the top of the image, which is not what we want to see. A lot of what we see in these scenes is really why you would pay for the higher zone count dimming from the Samsung Odyssey Neo G7 and the Neo G8, not that I'd recommend the Neo G8, and also why people tend to prefer OLED technology. I tend to think that the Neo G7 image gets as close to an OLED as I've seen from an LCD. Again, in these sorts of scenes, it doesn't get quite as bright as other monitors and not quite as bright as some of the OLEDs I've seen either. However, clearly its dimming capabilities for the dark shadow detail is far superior to what we see from the low zone count LCD technologies in the other parts of this image. And really, this is why you pay for HDR. You pay for HDR to get these deep, dark blacks and the bright, shiny objects on screen at the same time, which I really don't feel we're getting as much of with the other two images. Now, the 96 zones can be good in some circumstances. We can get a small amount of dimming, a moderate amount of dimming, depending on the scene, but clearly, once you start getting above 500 to 1000 zones, that's when we get the true benefits of HDR technology. And again, why I don't tend to recommend edge lit dimming in really any circumstance, because the differences that we're seeing for something like this is very substantial between edge lit dimming and 1000 zones.
The final example that I wanted to show is 21 by 9 aspect ratio content because how each of the HDR technologies differs for showing the black bars at the top and bottom of the screen is quite substantial and this is going to be very important for you if you're planning on watching a lot of movies for example that tend to use this sort of cinematic aspect ratio for their content. Not only do the HDR technologies differ in how they can dim you know, the actual content itself, but the content can dictate how much dimming we get for the black bars at the top and bottom of the screen. For example, if we pause here on this content, which tends to be fairly bright, but only in some sections of the display, you'll see that there is a difference between the three dimming technologies. With a thousand zones, no issue properly dimming the black bars at the top and bottom of the screen, which is really useful if you're playing this content in a very dark environment. It really makes it look like the screen is the aspect ratio of the content, and that, I think, gives a benefit when watching it. With the 96 zone image, the black bars are illuminated to some degree, but it does depend on the content. For example, this bottom section here below the tree trunk is slightly more dimmed than you'll see from the outer edges on this side, where content tends to be a bit brighter. So this content here is dictating how bright that section can be there. This content here dictates this section, this content here dictates this section, and so on. That's the benefit that you get of the 96 zones, but also those zones are still fairly large, which is why the edges are illuminated the way that they are. Whereas over here, when we're looking at the edge lit dimmed image, well, basically these entire black bars are illuminated at the top and bottom of the screen here. So we're really not getting too much dimming occurring in these sections, really none at all, because there are some bright elements up here, for example, which is going to limit how much dimming can occur down the bottom there. And you'll see this throughout the um, particular video that we're looking at here. And the differences between the scene we were just looking at and the scene that's directly after it is substantial between the dimming, especially the 96 zones and the edge lit dimming, uh, for how those black bars are handled. The content at the top and bottom of the screen here is darker than what we were just looking at, which means that for the 96 zones, yeah, we can dim that section a little bit better. We can dim this bottom section a little bit better than what we were just seeing. And that gets it closer to the thousand zones on the left, which of course still has perfect uh, dimming of those sections. Whereas the edge lit, well, we can't really dim these sections too well on this side because we need to have this middle portion where all those people are illuminated. So to illuminate this section, we need to raise the backlight, which extends all the way to the edges of the screen. So we don't get the benefits of the deep dark blacks that we're expecting from HDR content on the edge lit panel that simply can't dim those letterboxes as sufficiently as it should. Okay, so that's our comparison looking at 1196 FALD zones versus 96 zones versus edge lit dimming. Hopefully you can now see the benefits that the higher zone count brings and why this is typically a more premium option. Yes, I've seen your comments to add OLED to this as well to see how pure per pixel dimming fares and that will be coming at some point in the future. Just need to go and say film the Alienware AW3423DW in these scenes or perhaps the LG C2 once we've reviewed that monitor shortly. Anyway. Thanks for watching. That's it for this one. I guess I'll catch you in the next one.